Welcome to another review brought to you by longrangeonly.com. Today we're going to finish looking at the field review of the Zeiss Victory range finding binoculars. We brought you a little introduction to them a few months ago and talked about the pre-production samples that we had used. Now we'll give you the full updates based off our field review with the production samples. Stick around. Alright, in the previous review we went over essentially all the features that the binoculars had to offer. Nothing really changed, so we're not going to really show those again. You're welcome to check out our original review. But one thing we didn't do in the last one that I'd like to do here is kind of walk you through how to set up a ballistics profile and get it synced to your binoculars. So uh, here's a little clip showing you how to do that. We're going to walk you through the Zeiss hunting app. We'll click it to get it launched. It does take a minute to launch and you will be required to sign in occasionally. Uh, in this case, I have already been signed in. It just takes a minute to get launched. Once it opens up, you have a bunch of different options in here. We're just going to click on the dashboard in the upper left, and I'm going to show you how to build a ballistics profile. So I click into ballistics, it opens up and shows you the two that I already have in there. We're going to click and add a new one. We'll call it test. We'll get that typed in here. And then it allows you to select your rifle scope. We are going to go down and select a Conquest V4, 6 to 24. We'll leave the sight height at 2 inches above the bore. We'll tell it which reticle it has. It's the ZMO, ZMOA1. I selected Choose Factory Ammo. You can see here there's a plethora of available options, but in this case I'm going to change it to hand load. I choose the company. It's going to be Hornady. I'm going to choose the caliber, which is 284, and then I'm going to choose the bullet, which is 180 grain ELDM. You can see it didn't populate quite right. I'll change it to 180 grains. I'll set my muzzle velocity at 2920, but then I want to change the BC. This is a G1. I'm going to change it to a G7. And to cheat it, I tell it a starting velocity, which was the same as my muzzle velocity at 0 yards, and then I'll just make up a number of 2900 at 20 yards. I'll select some arbitrary pressure, temperature, and humidity values, and I'll click Calculate. Now it gives me the calculated BC. In this case, that's not correct. I didn't want it to be. I uh, will type in 360, which is what I want. Then I scroll down to the bottom and hit Continue, and now my profile is created. You can switch over to the table. Here you have inch, minute, and mil selections. You can do any combination of those three, as you can see I'm doing here. Uh, whatever you would prefer, you can do. Now, if I went back to ballistics, I selected my test one again, and you'll see I get the environmental screen. You must hit submit, and now the bottom left you can see the profile. That lets you get back in and edit. That did take me a minute to figure out. Uh, you can also change the magnification value, and since it's a second focal plane scope, it will update and show you where you need to hold. You can also change the shot angle value from there, and you can type it in as well if it's easier than using the slider. Now, we will connect to our binoculars. If I click connect, since I wasn't connected, it tells me how to do that. I press and hold the left button, and this is real time. It takes just a second and now we should be connected shortly. There we go. So if I click on ballistics, now you can see my different options. There are standard profiles, which we don't care. I clicked add profile so you could see the three options I had available. And pretty easy. You can select which one will become your favorite as well by clicking on it. Now here's the results display. There are seven standard ones where you can click your add your own configuration here you can select each of the three displays, as you can see here, range, then hold over in minutes and angle. That is my preference. There's a device settings tab. Here you can kind of select some of your different things, including uh, the factory settings for your buttons, or if you click reverse, it will change it. The usage data is neat, too. This actually will download all of the ranges you've gathered, shows the distance, the angle, and the pressure, and you can actually export that to Excel. Now let's sync this up. So we click sync, and just like that, it's done. It's lightning fast, uh, takes almost no time at all, super convenient. Now that you've seen how to sync the binoculars, one nice thing to know about them, anytime Zeiss pushes an update, you can actually update the firmware in the binoculars via Bluetooth in the app, which is a pretty nice feature. Once these hit the US market, 
A lot of guys were complaining that it wouldn't give readings in inches of mercury for your absolute pressure units. So Zeiss got an update out there and when you synced up with your app, it updated that firmware and now gives that reading, which is a lot nicer for those of us that are used to that. The other thing is, uh, realistically, this set was an 11 or 1200 yard rangefinder for big game. That's about all the more I could consistently get. I could see ranges further than that, but that's what I could count on. And in one of those firmware updates, they took the governor off the laser, so to speak, and did increase the ranging performance. I uh, will show you a list here of some ranges I just took. I just stepped outside my house on a bright snowy day and took readings on some trees and some houses. I realize that's not the same as ranging deer, but these were things that it wouldn't grab before in conditions like this. And, you know, it got to 1500 yards, no problem. I actually did have the chance to test out that improved ranging function in a bright snowy day while hunting elk. And uh, I was getting readings at 14, 1500 yards on deer and elk on a bright snowy face. So I think it definitely improved the ranging performance. I don't know where those limits are or how consistent it will be because this update was only pushed about a month or so ago. And with winter weather, it's kind of hard to get out and find those opportunities, but it did increase the performance and I'll report back if I find anything else differently later on. You can especially watch the uh, forum thread related to this video to get any updates there. Let's talk about the field impressions of this binocular. I really like how they fit in the hands. That little bit of a square bezel you see there, just really nice, fits my hands well. The optics are great. Uh, I'm used to carrying some Swarovski 8x32 ELs. I'm really not willing to give up optical quality to try something else out while on a big game hunt, but these didn't leave me wanting for anything. Edge to edge sharpness is probably to about you know, 80% of the field of view, and then it starts to get a little blurry as it reaches out to the edges. You also pick up a little chromatic aberration on those far fringes, but it's nothing that was distracting to me. I do mainly use these handheld. There is not an option for a tripod a threaded tripod mount like we discussed earlier in the previous review. You can hook them up to you know various plates with elastic straps and glass with them off a tripod, but I just really enjoyed using them handheld this fall and the optics were beautiful. All right, let's talk about the most important thing about these. How does the integrated ballistics and rangefinder work while in the field? And uh, I'm happy to report that it's worked well on steel as you saw in our previous review. And now it's two for two on big game animals for me. The uh, first elk was my elk that I was able to kill. It was a spike. I used my seven SOM, shooting 180 grain ELDM handload from Hornady. And I was able to get this elk at 965 yards, grab the data with these Zeiss binoculars, confirmed it with my Kilo 2400 just as a double check since I had confirmed that multiple times in the field. They were identical. Got down behind the rifle and uh, one shot and he was done. So hope you enjoy the clip. On him? Yep, waiting for you. Good. And shit. Now, I was feeling pretty good after that. You know, uh, elevation was absolutely perfect. I gave it a little bit too much wind. I was shooting up over a ridge line. I was worried that maybe I'd have a little more gustiness than I thought, but it got the job done. Uh, I was able to give it a second test in December on a late season cow hunt. I had a friend call me up and wanted to use my rifle and we went out one Saturday morning after a fairly steep hike. We ended up on this herd of elk. And this is where these binoculars really showed their worth. We were shooting across a canyon at a big long herd of elk. It was probably actually one of the coolest things I've seen while hunting. Just a big long line of them, almost a mile long. And the uh, last couple, there was a bull and two cows. And we were able to get on those. I think the first range was about 960. I got him set up behind the rifle. We got a little bit of dry fire opportunity to make sure everything was good. I was able to double check the wind and uh, they just kept moving. They wouldn't quite give us the shot. That's where these proved invaluable. I was able to stay in the glass, get constant range updates and immediately get a drop update as well. And when she uh, finally stopped at 1,040, one touch of the trigger was all it took. And here you can see that video as well. Nice shot, dude. Oh my gosh. Overall, I think Zeiss has done essentially what they set out to do with these binoculars. They are providing hunters with a one and done solution. 
you're able to take your binocular and your rangefinder combo out into the field, get immediate range data with your drop, pull the trigger, and you're done. You know, the only thing I would really like to see added to these from my perspective is some wind. If we had the ability to enter wind into the binocular and get, you know, that correction that way, it would make them a very, very nice all-in-one package. As it is now, you can take the data you have, open up their app and hurry and grab, you know, some wind values. You can enter those and get your uh, information that way, but it would be really nice to see that integrated all-in-one. Uh, that being said, if you're an ELR guy, I really don't know that these are quite for you. You know, they're, they're designed to be a premium hunting binocular, and at that they excel very well. And I'm excited to see what they continue to do with them as they update their firmware and continue to add to the app. But overall, for a guy looking for a one-and-done unit, it was my first experience using something like this, and I've walked away really impressed. Go ahead and check us out on our forum. There's a link in the bottom of the description of this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them on the forum page linked there. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Instagram and Facebook. We hope to see you again. Thanks for watching.